I'm Rob Myas. I'm the director and co-founder of the Organization for Bat Conservation, and this is the Bat Zone. We're located at Cranbrook Institute of Science, and we've got nocturnal animals here. Some are sleeping, but we're going to go check them out. are leaf-nosed bats from Central and South America, and they are fruit eaters. They fly and actually echolocate out of their nose instead of out of their mouth. The great advantage is they can have a big piece of fruit in their mouth and still fly through the rainforest and not end up running into anything. Also, people always think that bats are going to get stuck in their hair or attack them, and none of these bats want to get in my hair, and none of them want to eat me. They love eating fruit. Some of our nocturnal animals that we have here uh, include non-bats, even though the, we're, we're the organization for bat conservation. Uh, we've got some flying squirrels, we have some sugar gliders, we've got some owls. Uh, in the cage behind me are uh, straw-colored fruit bats, Egyptian fruit bats, and some Jamaican leaf nose bats too. So we can put different kinds of fruit bats together uh, because they eat the same thing. Uh, and these are really fascinating animals. So I'm going to go in and grab one so we can take a look at one close up. This is Congo. He's a 15 year old uh, straw colored flag fox and he's from Africa. And uh, there are bats that live in Africa this size and this is actually the largest. In uh, Zambia, Africa, in Kasanka National Park, there's a colony of over 8 million of these bats in October, November, and December. And one of the key things is that they migrate across Africa. And as they migrate, they spread seeds. So as they fly across Africa, they spread seeds. And they're one of the key animals for helping to uh, rejuvenate uh, and to replant the rainforest. This is molasses. He's a two-toed sloth. He's about 10 years old, and it's the largest of the six species of sloth that live in Central and South America. He's most closely related to the ground sloth, similar to Sid, the sloth from Ice Age. And one really interesting thing is that he only goes to the bathroom about once a week. In the wild, they climb down the tree, and they go to the bathroom, and then go back up the tree. They don't want to be eaten by jaguars or harpy eagles. This is a Rodrigues fruit bat. It's an endangered species from one little island in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Uh, her name is Coco and she's got an injured wing. Uh, she's here because she has an injury and she lives with a lot of the other bats here because uh, we take care of animals that are either injured or orphaned. Uh, this big bat, uh, two of them right here that are crawling around, are Malayan flying foxes. And these are the largest of the bats in the entire world. Uh, they've just recently been fed, so they're pretty happy about the food that they're getting. In the wild, they can eat two and a half times their body weight in fruit every single night. And it's great because they spread seeds and they pollinate plants. The bats here are, are here year-round. None of them hibernate, and it's important that we keep them actually pretty warm and humid. Uh, and that's the kind of conditions that they live in in the wild. This is a dog face bat, and they're from Malaysia. Uh, one of the really interesting things about these bats is that they actually make tents. They go and they chew on a leaf, and it falls over, and it makes a little tent. And they live inside there with about eight to ten bats. Very few bats make tents. Now the bats up here behind us are called Indian flying foxes, and they're the second largest bats in the world. They don't make tents, they hang up at the tops of rainforest trees. I'm inside the vampire bat enclosure, and we've got about uh, 30 different vampire bats here. They're common vampire bats. There's three species of vampire bats, and this one feeds off of cows. They live in Central and South America. They re rarely ever go up to people, and they feed at night. They drink about a spoon's worth of blood, and they don't kill the animal, but you gotta make sure to never pick up a bat if you ever see one. This is an Egyptian fruit bat, and sometimes people have had them as pets. But, you know, they're really not very good pets at all. They're not potty trained, they're nocturnal, and sometimes when they get irritated, they do bite. Uh, this bat here uh, has been hand raised, and this is a really good bat. What interesting thing about it is that they actually echolocate. They make ticks with their tongue. 
Let's let him go. 